What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be presenting the Wednesday night league tournament for you all here today. We have got a full house here at Full Grip tonight. Should be an exciting time for round one. We've got Owen Robinson on the left, Will Mantho on the right. Will Mantho is going to be playing Jirachi Zapdos. Both players are world's level competitive players. So this should be a pretty dynamite matchup we have here. Definitely excited to see what Owen has brought for us on his side of the table. I know Will is playing Zapdos because he is, uh, he loves Zapdos. He's been playing Zapdos at all of the local tournaments lately. Got second at a League Cup this past weekend with Zapdos, losing eventually to Stahl in the finals. Zach Cooper able to take it down for the win. Will has been favoring a Buzzwool or Ultra Beast version of Zapdos lately. And I believe I saw Owen has Lost March. I think I see that he has Lost March, which should be a favorable matchup for Will. Usually the Zapdos deck could just aggress very quickly. And actually, this looks like an atrocious hand for Owen here. He has got a bunch of Hoppips, a bunch of Skip Looms, but what appears to be absolutely zero draw cards. So this could be a quick round one if Will is able to get out of the gates quickly with that Thunderous Assault attack on Zapdos. Looks like Will has a Lily Hand to Owen's just handful of Pokemon, maybe in a single grass energy. Players are waiting for round one to start here. Looks like they're about to shake hands, so let's get right down to it. Owen, fortunately, is going to be going first, which does do him some favors, allowing him to set up a little bit. But we see him go for that Nuzzly Gathering. He's got nothing else in hand. That Emolga was the top deck for his turn, and I'd hate to see... Owen just get kind of one-two punched here with both of these Zapdoses on Will's side of the board before we get to see a real match. But unfortunately, this is just such a blazing fast format with Zapdos able to hit up to 80 damage there with Thunder Assault on the first turn of the game with Electro Power can hit even higher numbers. On T1, Thunder's Assault only costs one Lightning Energy, so very easy to activate. Fortunately for Owen, he does have three Hoppips, but does have to pass. Really hoping that Owen is able to draw a Supporter card here to get things going turn two. I know he does have a bunch of Hoppips in his hand, or Skip Looms, which are going to be able to thin his deck, search out the Jump Luffs with that Floral Path to the Sky ability. Looks like Will has a rainbow energy for his benched Zapdos, which he's considering attaching, but I know he's got a Lily in that hand, so he does have a turn one supporter. And then with the escape rope, he's guaranteed a turn one attack as well. Looks like he's opting to Ultra Ball here first. And thank you so much, Jagger Pit, for the sub, third month in a row. Appreciate it. Really enjoying the content. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Jagger Pit, for the sub. Hopefully you enjoy your new Weavile badge. Looks like Will is going to Ultra Ball here, going for the Stellar Wish Jirachi. And with the escape rope in his hand, if he's got an escape board as well, he will be able to escape rope into the Jirachi, then Stellar Wish. But if he doesn't have a switch card, he's just going to opt straight for that Zapdos. I like this play from Will before the turn one Lily. And he's getting a huge explosive draw here. We see him with an escape board in that hand and multiple switch cards, meaning that he is going to be able to pivot in and out of that Stellar Wish Jirachi for the next couple of turns. Will slams down an S-Ball. He's going to go for a second Jirachi just to stabilize this board position and really drive home his advantage here with a stellar board state. Owen just looking to weather this T1 knockout and hopefully be able to respond. Fortunately for Owen, he only needs five Pokemon in the Lost Zone to be able to knock out the Zapdos. And it looks like Owen actually just top decked a Hopip, so that's not going to do him any favors at all. 
If he's got one more skip loom in that hand though, he will be able to take a knockout on that Zapdos because of the 10 damage it did to itself with the rainbow energy. So we see Owen get both skip looms, which means that despite not having a supporter, he does have as strong of a start as he possibly can. And thank you so much, Arrow, for the bit donation. Thank you so much and appreciate the love. Saying good luck in Denver this weekend. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Arrow, for the well wishes. And sorry about that. I apparently forgot to remove that, uh, that transition there. So got the jump bluff up on the screen, though. We're going to fix that. Yeah, transition. <laughs> the transition needs to not do that every time. Very good. All right. So Owen has two jump bluffs in play now. And I know he's got that grass energy in his hand as well. So he's going to be able to deal 100 damage to Will's active Zapdos and grab that turn two knockout. I already know that Will does have the escape board in his hand, so he's going to be able to pivot out of that Stellar Wish Jirachi. The question is, does he have a lightning energy or a rainbow in that hand? He's got the energy lotto, and he opts to play the lotto first before the Stellar Wish and misses the lotto. I don't know if Will actually has a draw supporter right now, so he could be kind of on the fritz as he looks for an energy, tries to find himself a draw supporter or something like that. A Cynthia would be very good for Will as well right now so that he could shuffle draw this big hand, which I don't believe has a supporter card. And sure enough, insult to injury, Will does see a lightning energy there off of the Stellar Wish. So, you know, he knows the lightnings are there in his deck. He just is having trouble finding them in his hand. And he has a huge hand. It could just feel so bad to have a hand that big without the card you need in it. Will applies the escape board to the Jirachi and he could decide to pivot out here. He actually has the rainbow energy, so didn't see that in his hand. He's got the rainbow, so he's guaranteed a knockout on this jump bluff. Now it's Owen who is going to be energy dry here, searching for an energy. Will retreats confidently into his second Jirachi. He's got everything he needs. I know he's got multiple switch cards in his hand. Finds Shrine, Lily. Really, he's got plenty of resources to be able to drive it home throughout the course of this game. He's going to need to find some rescue stretchers here, though, to bring these Zapdoses back if they continue to go down. And Will does actually have a Cynthia in his hand as well. So a perfect hand refresher, able to just maximize the resources that he was using and see six new cards here off the Cynthia. So really great draws here for Will as he refreshes his hand with that Cynthia. And should put Owen in a pretty compromising situation. Owen was able to take a prize though, which I've been unable to see so far. So not exactly sure what Owen has off of the prizes, but he's got between that and a top deck to be able to find himself a uh, substantial draw card here for his upcoming turn. See, Will's got plenty of options here in this new hand. He's got Ultra Ball, Lightning Energy, and Tapu Koko GX. Ops to get rid of the Tapu Koko GX with Ultra Ball, thin his deck a little bit more, and it looks like he's going for another Zapdos. Just wants that backup attacker as reassurance for next turn, as this should just be a back and forth battle here. One hit knockout after one hit knockout coming down the line. That's how this matchup plays out. And since Zapdos was able to take that first knockout, he's going to be in the driver's seat here. Owen not playing any cards down immediately it makes me think he might not have anything. He's got Guzma. He has to try and stall the Zapdos and pass. That is brutal. Owen missing the cards he needs to take that knockout. Will is already up one prize. Now he's about to extend that lead to two with his Zapdos army and Will thoughtfully targets down Owen's jump left there 
going to make it even harder for Owen to respond with a knockout next turn. Lost March just getting run off the table here. And unfortunately for Lost March, that's just what we have been seeing with this deck. I think Lost March could get better uh, with the release of the new Dedenne GX. It's going to be coming out in our next set. It could give this deck some much needed additional draw power. And thank you so much, Adavok, for the 100 bits. You know what time it is. Time to delete Lost March. Yes, very funny. I uh, have to agree. Yes, I was able to film a video this morning for YouTube on Lost March. If you guys caught that, it did not go very well. But yes, Lost, Ar Lost March, not my favorite deck in standard right now. It just tends to kind of tank out. When it works, it works beautifully. But when it struggles, it does struggle, unfortunately. Looks like Owen is able to get another jump bluff into play and is thinning his deck even more with Emolga's Nuzzly Gathering ability. But does he have the energy he needs to attack with that jump bluff, or is he just thinning his deck? Looks like he just had to thin his deck, and then Will is going to take another Guzma on another jump bluff here. Owen frustratingly shaking his jump bluff. He knows that this is his last uh, jump bluff that he has available right now. Thank you so much, Ewok Chief, for the 100 bits. It's for the Save Lost March fund. He wants to save Lost March. I don't know if 100 bits is going to save Lost March, unfortunately, but maybe Dedenne GX will with its new ability, uh, which is very, very strong. Just giving decks like Lost March some much needed draw power. Will is able to take that jump bluff out with Thunderous Assault. Owen has to promote unenthusiastically an Amolga, and finally he gets a Pokemon communication. This is the first real playable search card we've seen from Owen so far, other than I think maybe he had a Nest Ball turn one, but other than that, uh, this has been it. So he's going to go for Let Loose here, but unfortunately this is too little too late for Owen. Uh, almost no matter what he searches out or what you know Will draws off this Let Loose, it's not going to be able to keep Will from winning. We see Will padding his Jirachis here. Doesn't really matter. He's got two Jirachis in play, both suited up with a skateboard. So even though Owen is making the correct play by going for that Let Loose Marshadow, Will is not concerned. He's been thinning his deck just fine and should have a great hand here off of that Let Loose. Owen will get to see four new cards, though, which is very good. He's going to be looking for a Natu and potentially a DCE as well, which would really help him with taking a knockout at the very least. But, oh my goodness, Owen just sees another atrocious hand off this Let Loose. He's got two Trumbeaks and a Great Ball and a Pokemon Communication. So technically, Owen can use both Trumbeaks, send them both to the Lost Zone, and then go in with potentially a Pokecom and just get himself another Let Loose, kind of what he needs to do. Owen needs a draw supporter. I mean, there's no, no getting away with this. If he does not find a draw supporter, definitely needs that. Looks like he's going for a Ranguru, so that's fine. I think that a is very good. That actually signals to the fact that Owen did not ever have a Nest Ball, or he definitely would have gone for an Oranguru earlier. He finds the Oranguru and will be able to instruct. This is an entirely playable hand, so I like this here. It just gives him some board stability as well. I'm not sure why Owen opted to instruct before playing the Great Ball. I think uh, playing the Great Ball first and giving yourself an opportunity to instruct for three seems like the optimal play there. Uh, and what's crazy is I think that uh, I think that Owen actually did uh, find the DCE off of his instruct. So if he was able to find a Natu off of that Great Ball, then he would have been good for a Lost March attack. But Looks like Owen just really grinding his gears here and 
performing all his game actions just three or four turns too late here. Things he needed to be doing a long time ago. And Owen will just put a DC onto the Oranguru and have to pass. That Oranguru can attack eventually with its psychic attack, but Will is going to just use Escape Rope and force up one of Owen's Amolgas. He'll get to use Stellar Wish again and search another trainer card off the top five cards of his deck, which he's been doing all game. And we're just seeing the difference in consistency between these two decks really come through right now. Uh, one of the reasons that Lost March has been struggling to gain some footing in this meta, even though it is a powerful non-GX deck, Zapdos just is very unforgiving with its speed and the precision with which it can take these pointed knockouts. If you've got a lone hop hip on your bench, Zapdos can be knocking it out. If you've got a lone uh, attacker you're trying to build up, Zapdos can probably target that down too. It's just, uh, it's just very, very hyper-aggressive. Owen's going to go in with another Trumbeak there and get at least a ninth Pokemon into the Lost Zone and then place his first draw supporter of the game in Lily. And sure enough, he Lilies into multiple other Lilies, which has to be very frustrating. Owen does have a energy. He can attack with the Oranguru this turn, but that kind of feels bad. It's not exactly what you want to do. Uh, Owen also is able to Lost Blender away two more Pokemon there. And sure enough, we are seeing that Psychic come out from the Oranguru, and it's not even for a knockout. Pretty sure it does 80 damage plus the 10. That Zapdos is going to be at 90 damage right now. And Owen flashing his hand full of lilies to the camera. Definitely a plus, uh, frustrating showing here. Will has only got one prize remaining. All he has to do is target down one of those Pokemon on Owen's bench with a switch, Guzma, something of the sorts and he'll be able to take the game but looks like maybe he doesn't have it already owen's only able to take one prize this game very frustrating for owen uh will actually does have a switch so that is not quite game i think if will just realizes that he has tapu coco gx in his discard pile he could rescue stretcher for it and sky eye claws sure enough will does see the play he is going to bring all the energy up to the tapu coco and sky high claws for game and that's going to be it he actually says he wants to tapu thunder gx i think he's thundering you know tapu thunder gxing but that uh that should just be game here and will extends his hand that's going to be it will emerging victorious 1-0 at the full grip games wednesday night league tournament a commanding victory there by Zapdos Ultra Beast over Lost March at the hands of Owen Robinson. All right. So, yeah, you guys saw me get burned a little bit there by the, uh, by the cool animations. Like, I have, like, this super nice, like, transition, but I forgot to switch it on OBS, so I got, like super smoked by that so that was uh that was unfortunate uh we're going to oh i probably probably messed up with uh i see i'm trying new things so with all these new like kind of animations i'm still like there's going to be some growing pains here and some things are going to not not look uh a hundred percent but it's cool like you know it takes uh it takes some time to learn new things so that's what uh we got going on how you guys doing in the chat thank you all for joining us here uh, Pokemon Breeders, what's up? You missed last couple streams, but the play for Denver is something that counters Zapdos. What's up, Will? Come on in. Yes. Oh, there's, oh should I pull the chair? Yep. All right. Yeah, I'm not doing the transitions today. Will, okay. So we're just... Uh, she said you were, so... We're just live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're just live. All right, we got Will Mantho here, everybody. Uh, how you doing here, Will? Pretty good. Yeah, so pretty commanding win there. Yeah. Yeah, so how did you feel about that matchup overall? It's 99-1 in Zapdos' favor. 99-1. to one. You say pretty much a does-not-lose matchup. You can't lose. You can't. <laughs> I, I'd have to agree with you. Yeah. I was playing, I actually played Lost March on video today for the YouTube channel, and I lost to Zapdos. It was just, I mean, I got to one-to-one -one prize, 
Mm-hmm. And sometimes it will do that, mm-hmm. but Zapdos always takes the first prize. They always do, yeah, Always, for sure. literally always. You like, would have to draw literally about one in a hundred chances of drawing perfectly with Lost Mark to yeah, make it happen. Yeah, like you have to go second, and they get like three Lost Blenders and not two star, and DC. Yeah, <laughs> it never happens like that. Never. <laughs> but uh, still, so... Uh, how do you feel about Zapdos Ultra Beasts in the current meta? You were able to take second at a League Cup this past weekend. What do you think about the deck? Uh, and do you think it's a good call for the Denver Regional Championships? I think it's probably one of the top, top few decks in format right now. So Yeah, I'd have to say so. Now, you're been, you've been playing the uh, Zapdos deck with the Ultra Beasts in it. What do you think they bring to the table uh, that Zapdos was kind of missing without them? Well, like, against, like, Zorark, without any text, like, you just lost. Like, there's no chance. For sure. But it, even if you, like, show them a rainbow energy, like, when you're shuffling, or, like, if you discard <laughs> one, like, they get scared instantly. They're like, oh, no, I have to play around Buzzle and Nihilego now. Right. So, like, they can't, oh, no. It's, and the Buzzle just kills it, kills anything it wants to, basically. I agree. And, and um, I guess Pikaram, they can't they can't play around both of the Ultra Beasts. They, they can only play around, like, one of them, usually. So they, they can either full blitz around, uh, or not full blitz, uh, tag bolt around Buzzle or Nihilego. Right. So it's pretty good, yeah. Unless you happen to, like, start your Tapu Koko GX. Oh. <laughs> in which case, they can play around both. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you start Koko GX against Pika around, you just lose instantly. You probably yeah. lost. Yeah, you probably <laughs> lost. So good stuff, Will. Another solid showing. Uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you later on in the tournament. And Thanks. best of luck. Thank you. All right. Take it easy. Gearing up for round two here at the Full Grip Games Wednesday Night League Tournament. We've got John Polachek on the right. Last week's 4-0 winner against Matt Nawal, local player and judge, and also league leader on the left. I believe Matt Nawal is going to be playing a Zapdos deck. And John was able to win last week with Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX, so we could be seeing a Pikachu and Zekrom deck here from John. Both of these players are 1-0 here going into the second round of our league tournament, so they will be vying for a spot at the top tables for sure. Going 2-0 would be fantastic for either of these guys and increase their odds of being able to win some store credit here tonight at our league tournament which is what all these players are playing for. No championship points on the line tonight. These players are vying for some store credit, uh, which we offer here at Fulgrim. We take the amount of players and multiply that by $5, and that's how much prize money is in the pool for store credit to be won. Looks like Matt has a hand with a Jirachi in it, takes a mulligan card there. He's got a Jirachi and an Ultra Ball and some Lightning Energies. And it looks like, uh, well, it looks like maybe they hadn't decided who was going to go first. Supposed to decide that before you see your hands, but it's all good. Happens sometimes. These players are just waiting for the go-ahead from the judges to see who is going to be on the draw here in round two. So, uh, a lot of players test in this format uh, very, very thoroughly, trying to figure out what the top play for the Denver Regional Championships is. I think this could be a little bit of a preview of what's to come at Denver. I think that both Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX as well as Zapdos are top threats heading into Denver. The cool thing about both decks is that There has been no really identified list that is the top list for either. There's about a million ways to play Zapdos right now. You can play it with Jolteon. You can play it with Ultra Beasts. You can play it with Lycanroc. These are all ways I've seen to play Zapdos. You can also just play it. uh, You can just play it with just straight Zapdos, no Jolteon. And then with Pikachu and Zekrom, we've seen a lot of Lightning Box style decks with Jirachi. We've seen Pikachu and Zekrom without Jirachi, just turbo style. I've seen it, uh, you know, in my case with order pads. I've seen it with acro bikes. There's like a million ways to play Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX as well. So it should be interesting to see how players decide to craft their decks for Denver and which strategies end up taking it all this weekend. 
And Full Grip Games is actually going to be sponsoring the stream at the Denver Regional Championships as well. So that's something else to look forward to. I've created some videos that are going to be played between rounds, which I'm pretty excited about as well. Some deck profiles as well as some pretty funny little bits for Full Grip. So pretty stoked on those and should be fun. Players are shaking hands, getting ready to roll here. It looks like Matt Nawal has started double Jirachi against John's single Jirachi. Matt is on the draw. Great start here from both of these players. And it looks like Matt has got a turn one Volkner. So he's going to be able to get a lightning and probably a nest ball out of his deck to go grab a basic Pokemon that he wants. Or an escape board. I actually like this play as well. He's just going to be able to uh, give that Jirachi in his active free retreat. Maybe he already has another uh, search card in his hand. And yes, sure enough, he does. He's going to Ultra Ball those two Lightnings away right away and probably get himself a Zapdos. And sure enough, we do see Zapdos coming into play there. So grabbing the escape board off of that Volkner, great call there for Matt. Going to give him free retreat and the ability to pivot between both of these Jirachis with Stellar Wish. We see Matt go to equip that Jirachi with the escape board and Stellar Wish. Looking at the top five cards of his deck, he's going to be able to select a trainer card he finds there to put into his hand. Unfortunately, those trainer cards are off camera right now, but hopefully we get to see the one that he selects. And sure enough, that also is off camera. So not going to be able to see what Matt has chosen there off the Stellar Wish. And going in for another one, we got another look here with Stellar Wish. If Matt is able to find a switch out, that would be good. And he'll be able to kind of load his hand up with some great options for turn two. Going first in this matchup is great for Zapdos as well. Looks like Matt was able to find a second escape board, which is very good. And stay woke, Jirachi. John on the draw now. He's got his Stellar Wish Jirachi in the active. He's going to be looking to get probably a Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX on the bench and then start to throw some energy its way. Most of the time, Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX is going to be getting a turn two full blitz, which is huge for Zapdos in this matchup because Zapdos is going to be able to target down a Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX with an energy on it and potentially prevent that, um, that turn two full blitz from coming from a clean Pikachu and Zekrom. Looks like John is opting to play down that Ultra Ball, and we'll have to discard two cards from his hand. He's got Choice Band and an Electro Power, getting rid of those. Electro Power is not super big in this matchup because Pikachu and Zekrom really is going to be one hit KOing almost everything in Matt's deck. And it looks like Matt does actually have a bunch of Guzmas in his hand, so that is very strong. And if John is not able to pull off a turn one attack here, then Matt will be able to target down whatever attackers John has on his bench. So John does have that energy evolution Eevee. He's going to be able to go back into his deck with that energy evolution ability. Shuffled up, but yeah, about to undo that shuffle right away. Here we go. Getting Jolteon out from the deck, which he checked to see that it was there. So Cool stuff here from John. We've got a turn one Jolteon. Jolteon can be very strong in this matchup because that first attack there, Electro Bullet, can knock out a Zapdos with just one Electro Power being played. And we did see John opt to get rid of an Electro Power, so he may already have another one in his hand. Uh, but instead, he's just actually going to go for a Cynthia. So he gets the uh, he gets the shuffle draw six and is looking for a switch card. Now, unfortunately, the one of Electro Power would not have been able to knock out the Jirachi that Matt has active. So he's going to need a few more cards. If he can get an Ultra Ball and some Lightning Energies and a switch card, then he is going to be able to use Tapu Koko GX or Tapu Koko Prism Star, I mean, 
in order to dance at the ancient some energy onto the Jolteon GX. But we could just see uh, maybe in a skateboard or a switch and a turn one electro bullet damage two of Matt's Pokemon here. We do see a nest ball come down from John. He's gonna be able to grab a Pokemon out of his deck and sure enough, he gets the Pikachu and Zekrom tag team GX. Now John also does bench the Absol. That Absol is going to prevent Matt from being able to free retreat with the escape board. So Absol, uh, definitely a key component in this matchup. It's going to be very good for John going forward. Now the question is, does John have a switch card? And will he be able to pivot into an attacker this turn, or will he have to wait until next turn and give Matt that strict advantage? Looks like John actually has a second nest ball in his hand, so he's going to go play that as well in order to get another basic Pokemon into play. And it looks like he just grabbed Zapdos. I think that Zapdos could be a good call in this matchup as well. Just being able to trade one for one is good to kind of just progress the board state of both players. So definitely useful. I think that most of these Lightning Toolbox decks are playing one or two copies of Zapdos. This could be a two of in John's deck. Just giving himself plenty of options here. We see John has the entire bench filled with lightning Pokemon, except for Absol, but filled with different lightning attackers. He's got a little bit of everything there on his bench. Matt is going to be going for a Stellar Wish here, and we already know that he's got Guzma in his hand. So he could opt to bring up John's attacker. He could target down the Jolteon since it has the energy on it. Looks like Matt's gonna get a Nest Ball here off of the Stellar Wish to get another Pokemon out of his deck. And it looks like Matt is actually playing the Lycanroc version of Zapdos. I've seen this floating around a little bit. He plays basic fighting energy as well. So he does have an option to use Dangerous Rogue against these Pikachu and Zekrom GX. So that's gonna be a great option for Matt coming down the line as well. And sure enough, off the Nest Ball, we do see a Rock Ruff on Matt's side of the field. Definitely something that is going to have to be taken into consideration in this matchup. That Lycanroc GX can really tear through John's deck if he if he is unprepared for it. Matt does just go in with another Stellar Wish though. So he Guzmas, grabs the other Stellar Wish, he promotes uh, his own Jirachi. So He's going to have to have a switch card and an electro power in order to knock out this Absol. If not, that Jirachi is just going to be stuck active. So hopefully he did not forget. No, he's got the lightning energy to retreat through that ability. And then he needs an electro power to knock out this Absol. There's the electro power coming down from his hand. And he'll thunderous assault for knockout on the Absol. Wants to get that Absol right out the way. And Matt has the Rock Ruff on the bench. So the cool thing about this board state for Matt is that he can use the Tapu Koko Prism Star to accelerate energy onto that Rock Ruff and then eventually evolve into Lake Rock. He can actually pull off the Dangerous Rogue GX in just one turn with Tapu Koko Prism Star. So that is a neat, neat little interaction that I haven't actually seen happen yet but something we could see happen in this game. John's gonna go in with Volkner to guarantee himself the lightning energy, and we could see an attack come into play. He's got an energy and an energy switch, so John might be going for a full blitz here. If he's got a Thunder Mountain Prism Star in his hand, that would be very interesting, and I'd uh, be curious to see if maybe Matt can respond to it or has the cards to respond. But it looks like John's actually just going to go in with the Jolteon GX and Headbolt. That's Zapdos for knockout. Both players have taken one prize. Matt's got a hand with what appears to be Guzma and a Nest Ball and Electro Power. Matt does need more cards here to kind of make the dream work. I think I want to see Matt go for the Tapu Koko Prism Star here and then Cynthia for a big Shuffle Draw 6 and potentially go for a huge dangerous rogue play here. 
It's kind of what I want to see happen, and sure enough, Matt sees it. He goes for the Tapu Koko Prism Star, and then uh, I'm guessing that we're going to be seeing a draw card here from Matt Nawal. That, or he might be shuffling up just to go for a Stellar Wish first. He goes for the Stellar Wish first, so that's fine. He's going to look at the top five cards of his deck, looking for an Ultra Ball. He also wants to find a Fighting Energy. He's going to need to find a Fighting Energy in order to manually attach it to the Lycanroc GX. I don't believe he's got it in his hand right now, but potentially in the upcoming, you know, in the rest of his turn, he might draw into it with one of the draw supporters that I know that he's got there. So he goes in with that first one. Fortunately, Matt does not have to worry about that Absol anymore, so he should be smooth sailing here, able to pivot in and out of these Jirachis, and he's going to escape rope. So John will be able to promote whatever Pokemon he wants off of the escape rope. I think it's probably correct for him to promote that Jirachi. It's just the safest bet. And Matt is saying, you know what, if I attack this turn, it's probably going to be with a Lycanroc, so it doesn't really matter because I'll be able to Bloodthirsty Eyes up whatever I want. Matt does have a hand with a second escape rope, which doesn't actually do him a lot of favors right now, and Electro Power, which also doesn't help since I think he plans on trying to attack with the uh, with the Lycanroc GX. Now, I'm not sure that Matt has the Lycanroc GX in his hand already. Uh, I think he is missing that piece of the puzzle. So he needs to draw into a specific two cards here off the draw supporter, which is why I think I would have liked to seen Matt go for the Cynthia first if he has that. Uh, but it actually looks like he's just going to Volkner. So that could just get him both pieces. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. He's got Volkner in his hand, so if he's got Ultra Ball in the deck, which it looks like he might not have Ultra Ball in the deck, that could be devastating. Sure enough, did not see an Ultra Ball. So he's just going to grab the Nest Ball. That's a safe play. He can get the Lightning Energy and go for the Zapdos. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, he had no way to get that uh, Fighting Energy either. So it was never going to be a Lycanroc turn. He's going to have to save that play for later when he does have the Lycanroc uh, at his disposal. I actually didn't see the Lycanroc in his deck either. So Matt is going to be able to take this prize, knocking out John Storacci, going down to four prizes remaining. And John still has a fully loaded Jolteon ready to go, undamaged as well. So John is kind of sitting pretty, doesn't really mind too much we know he's got energy switch in his hand as well so that's another option for john he can pivot to a new attacker once this one takes some heat i don't expect to see john use uh jolteon's gx attack i think that john would much rather save his gx for a potential tag bolt later in the game john gets to lily for two Two cards is better than none, so even though that draw is not super aggressive, it could sometimes just get you that extra card that you needed, maybe an energy to attach for turn. It's got an energy going down onto the Pikachu and Zekrom tag team GX, and then it's just going to take a knockout on that active Zapdos with Jolteon GX again. Headbolt. Matt has a backup Zapdos, a couple of Electro Powers, and a Lily. I think I wanted to see Matt go all in here with those Electro Powers and potentially just go for a knockout on the Jolteon GX. That would just be so good for Matt. But it looks like he's going to be a little bit more conservative and save his resources, which you know, I don't blame him for either. He's going to Stellar Wish and Escape Rope. And John promotes the Pikachu and Zekrom GX, showing he's got no fear of that... Rock rough on Matt's bench. No fear whatsoever. Promoting the Pikachu and Zekrom over the Zapdos that he had on his bench. Looks like Matt is going to Stellar Wish again. Gets to look at the top five, see if there's anything there that he wants to grab with Stellar Wish. He's got a Switch, maybe a Lily. That's a Kakui. Wow, he's got a Professor Kakui as well boost Zapdos' damage output. 
could be useful just to hit into the Pikachu and Zekrom this turn. I think that it's probably what we're going to end up seeing from Matt Nawal, just a big swing into this Pikachu and Zekrom. I don't think that Like a Rock is an option for him at this moment. So hitting into the Pikachu would be good though for Matt. And it looks like he's just going to Kukui and double Electro Power, so he could be doing a potential ton of damage to this Pikachu and Zekrom with a Zapdos this turn. And it looks like Matt does have a Nest Ball, so he's going to be able to search his deck for another basic Pokemon. He's going to grab the Blitzel. If that evolves into Zebstrika, he's going to be able to use Sprint to turn through his deck a little bit more. I think Matt is going to Dance of the Ancients. If he's got two Lightning in a discard pile, I want to see one go down onto the Rock Ruff and one go down on the Zapdos for sure. Uh, just suiting up that Rock Ruff for an eventual Dangerous Rogue, which could definitely win him the game. But I believe Matt's Lycanroc is prized, so it looks like Matt's got Thunderous Assault for big numbers here against this Pikachu and Zekrom. And he's just one hit away from going down. Uh, the Pikachu and Zekrom sustaining a hit for 160 damage this turn. John is going to draw his card. He's got free retreat with the Zera Aura's Thunderclap zone, so I highly anticipate that John will retreat this Pikachu and Zekrom out of harm's way and go into Jolteon this turn. Uh, but in fact, actually, we see John kind of doubling down here and attaching to the Pikachu. Maybe he's decided that it's now or never. I need to full blitz and prepare a Tag Bolt GX or I'm never going to win this game. So I think that that's kind of a fair thought, but uh, I might rather just want to see maybe a Jolteon attack here, try to slow this game down. If that Pikachu and Zekrom goes down, then all Matt has to do is find a way to knock out that Zapdos on that Zapdos on John's bench, and it's going to be game, right? So John elects to grab Electro Power and Lightning Energy off of his Volkner for turn. And I'm not exactly sure where that Electro Power is going to come into play unless he plans on retreating into Zapdos potentially. But actually, we do see a retreat come down. Okay, so Jolteon uh, is going to be the active Pokemon. So maybe we see an Electro Bullet, but no, just a Head Bolt again. No GX attack. So John just stay in the course with that Jolteon GX that Matt has refused to hit into so far. So uh, looks like Matt is going to be attaching Choice Band to his Rock Ruff and will Lily and what's crazy is that Rockruff could actually deal like a lot of damage to a uh, Jolteon GX. If he was going to attack with it, I don't think that you'd want to. You have to flip a coin to attack with that Rockruff. I'd much rather see Matt Nawal get a secondary attacker into play. In order to do that, he's going to need a Rescue Stretcher to bring one of these Zapdos back. And sure enough, I see Rescue Stretcher as one of his five cards to select off of Stellar Wish. So he's going to grab that Rescue Stretcher, going to be able to bring a Zapdos back from the discard pile and potentially attack, attack with that Zapdos this turn. But at this point, um, Matt definitely has to find himself a Guzma to take out this Pikachu and Zekrom. Having an undamaged Jolteon in the active is definitely scary, especially since John at a certain point could just use Swift Run GX and potentially deny Matt another prize. And with John ahead in the prize lead, that means that things could get a little hairy. If Matt just has to swing into this active Jolteon, that puts Matt at needing two more turns to finish the game, where John could theoretically close up the game in two more turns. So he would be going first, right? So or he would have that first swing into the two-turn clock. So I think that if Matt doesn't get this Guzma for knockout on the Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX, then the advantage goes to John here 
But if he is able to knock out the Pikachu and Zekrom GX, then I think that Matt is definitely in the driver's seat. What's good to realize is that that Like a Rock GX could just close the game out as soon as Matt is able to get it. But we have not been able to see him capitalize on that yet so far at all. Looks like Matt's going to escape rope and force something up on John's side of the field. I think I want to see him, yeah, just promote the Zapdos, really. Though, if Matt is able to knock out that Zapdos, then it is actually just a, a swift finish to this game because he, all he has to do is bring up the Pikachu and Zekrom, and that's it. So I think potentially promoting the Zeraora might have been a better play just to try and deny Matt from taking a prize this turn and force him to have to Guzma twice in order to take the win. See Matt contemplating his hand here, trying to figure out how to proceed. Uh, I see that he took a Guzma off of the Stellar Wish, but it's quite possible that he just doesn't have an attack this turn. Sometimes Zapdos kind of gets in that grinder where you just don't have a response. You, know, you just don't have the cards you need off the Stellar Wish in order to kind of whip out that knockout. But we do see Matt actually eyeing up the Tapu Koko GX. He could sky high claws, but he puts himself at a huge risk of losing the game if he does because then uh, all John has to do is knock that out. He is very close to winning. We see Matt actually just have to end up passing turn. He didn't get the pieces that he needed for that knockout. John definitely at an advantage here with this current board state, though. He does have to figure out how to move that Zapdos. We do see the lightning energy come down on the Zapdos, though, so he's going to be able to retreat that for free with Thunderclap Zone. And John just has an easy choice here to pivot into Jolteon, I think, take another prize, try to save that Pikachu and Zekrom so that it does not get wiped out. And I think that is uh, probably the best way forward here. Looks like John actually decides to promote the Pikachu and Zekrom. This really scares me here. I think that this could be a potentially dangerous play, uh, but John's just gonna go in with a Volkner and get lightning energy and I have to imagine he gets himself another Pikachu and Zekrom in order to full blitz two but instead opts to get himself an electro power so I think this is like a very frightening play if John does not have another Pikachu and Zekrom to charge up here I think that it's uh it's Yep, we'll have to see. He's got a handful of, ele I know he's got energy switches and electro powers in his hand. John has played Volkner every turn for the last few turns. So if he shuffle draws, then he loses all these resources. I think he's just kind of stacking his hand for an eventual game winning play, but John's just gonna go in with full blitz on the Pikachu and Zekrom. And I really hope that he does not accelerate those to the active Pikachu and Zekrom. If he does, that is going to be a potentially very dangerous play because it could leave him vulnerable to losing all his energy. And sure enough, that's right where it goes. If Matt is able to get a knockout, then he is in a great spot. All he has to do is attack with a Zapdos. I think John just kind of has the win in his sights and maybe is like not scared, but Matt just needs to do almost anything in order to knock this out he could use sky high claws i mean he could bring in the tapu coco gx in his hand to do it there are like a bunch of different outs that he has to knock out this pikachu and zekrom so this is a, a little bit frightening for me however if matt does put down a gx pokemon john does have the electro powers in hand to take a knockout on a GX Pokemon. So I know that John has the firepower in his hand to knock out a Tapu Koko GX or a Jolteon. And it looks like Matt is going to put down the Tapu Koko 
and we're seeing him have to attack with his Tapu Koko. He doesn't have any of the ball search cards to get the uh, to get the Zapdoses out of his deck. We saw him shuffle three Zapdos back into his deck. I think that could end up being kind of the critical, uh, I guess, critical choice that really led Matt to where we're at now, where he's unable to find his Lycanroc, right? And he has to resort to attacking with GX attackers. And John is just going to be able to double Electro Power. I know he's got two Electro Powers in his hand, so he can just finish off this Tapu Koko GX with double E Power and a Jolteon. Matt is going to take three prizes, though, on this Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. The Thunder Mountain Prism Star makes it so that the attack only costs two energy. John promotes his Jolteon GX. He should have the Electro Powers in his hand that he needs. In order to finish this game off, let's see if he reveals them to us. Uh, we see him taking a minute here to contemplate his play, and we'll see. I know he got them both. There they are. And he could just headbolt for game, and that's it. Player shaking hands. John is going to emerge victorious here. Moving on to 2-0 at our Full Grip Games League Tournament. Got John here. Talk about your win, and congrats last week as well. Yeah, it's uh, on a pretty good roll. Hope, it's, hope it lasts for a while. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So you're 2-0 here again. Right. Excellent stuff. How do you feel about that last game? What was uh, going through your mind? I was nervous being on stream, but uh, I didn't yeah. want to embarrass myself. First time. No, you did good. But, you uh, won. Yeah, he he had a couple uh, bad breaks. Yeah. But that's happened to me, so I'm not going to complain too much. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. Good stuff, though. So uh, you were able to kind of take consistent knockouts with Jolteon, and he really was kind of the king of that matchup, it seemed like. Yeah, that's uh, what that deck gets worked that way a couple of times, actually. Yeah. Wow. And sometimes I feel like uh, players don't want to hit into the Jolteon because they feel like it's a waste of time, right? But then that can just leave Jolteon there to kind of just take the matchup by storm, really. Yeah, he hits okay for what he does. I mean, it's uh... For sure. He's very efficient against Zapdos. Right. <laughs> and I just want to take a second to thank Matrix for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate it. So uh, this is uh, your second tournament. Now you're 2-0 again. Uh, is it a four-round tournament tonight? Yes, it is. All right, so another four-round tournament tonight. Is there any deck that you're nervous about playing with Pikachu and Zekrom? No, unless it's the mirror. Just the mirror is what gets you. What's scary about the mirror to you, then? Because I know what it can do. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, were you worried all about the Lycanroc GX in Matt's deck? Yeah, I saw him sitting on that, and I was going to go after it, but uh -huh. I, I, think, I thought I had enough cushion to take the hit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it was scary because, like, he could use that Coco Prism Star, put an energy onto it, a potentially dangerous rogue, but I think it must have been prized because we didn't see it come it out. Was. Yeah, we didn't see that come out that game. I think his but, Jolteon was as well. So oh, that's my kind gosh. Of, kind of bad for him. Actually, I saw the Jolteon was in his hand. So, like, oh, he yeah. couldn't, uh, when he went to put, he put the lightning on it, he couldn't evolve because it was, okay, the Jolteon was in his was, hand, yeah. yeah that was so, tough. tough stuff. But, anyways, congrats on another yep. good run, 2-0. So, uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you in the later rounds. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Excellent. Good stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Gearing up for round three here at the Full Group Games League Tournament. We've got Andrew Barlow on the left versus Jesse Parker on the right. Both players, 2-0. Andrew Barlow is going to be playing Tapu Bulu GX, a card we have not seen in quite some time. Jesse Parker is going to be showing off his Zygarde GX deck, which could be a sign of things to come in standard format. We just got uh, new card scans revealed that shows a new Zygarde form that increases Zygarde's damage output. So very cool. Barlow looks like he's going to be on the draw here, but he has got a hand with not much in it. I think it's maybe a Volkner or a Cynthia. He's got a Cynthia. Opts not to attach any of the lightning energy from his hand to the Tapu Bulu. He's going to want to get a grass energy on the Tapu Bulu if he can, since Tapu Bulu's attack does require two grass energy. And then also the Tapu Bulu's horn attack could do some heavy lifting against Jesse's Zygarde as well, since Horn Attack does do 30 damage, and then 60 with the Choice Band, which he already has attacked, attached, which means that he could deal 120 damage with Weakness to 
Jesse's active Zygarde GX. So that could be very strong here. Andrew able to find a Bulu and a Grubbin off the Cynthia and the Grass. So really stellar draws there for Andrew Barlow off of that Cynthia draw. Exactly what he wants to see. Now, Jesse was talking to me a little bit about this Turbo Zygarde deck at League yesterday. I went to a League challenge and was telling me that it just plays this crazy engine. And as we can see here, he's got Energy Lottos. He's got Let Looses in here. He's going to be able to Let Loose Barlow right here, probably with the Ultra Ball. It plays Judge Whistle, Acro Bikes. And the goal is to just go in and kind of ham yourself through the deck as quickly as possible and then try to get a very quick uh, attack. And we're forgetting, blanking on what that Zygarde's attack is, Cell Connector. Aim to get a quick Cell Connector off. If Jesse can launch that Cell Connector attack uh, turn one, which is what he's doing. He'll be able to accelerate fighting energy onto his Zygarde GX and prepare for either a large Land Wrath or Verdict GX. Looks like Jesse has a big Lily for seven with Ultra Ball in hand. So he's going to be able to get that Let Loose that he wants. Sure enough, we see a hand with Ultra Balls, fighting energies. Putting the fighting energy into the discard pile is actually really good for Jesse because he's going to be able to accelerate that energy with that cell connector attack. So that's going to be powerful. And he's really going to be putting a lot of pressure down on Barlow. Jesse opts to Ultra Ball away to fighting energy. I think that's a good call. And we'll probably go for a let loose, even though Barlow only has three cards in hand. So I think it would be doing... You know, it might be doing Barlow more of a favor than anything. So we actually might just see Jesse go for a card like Buzzwool instead. And sure enough, we do see him eyeing up that Buzzwool, which will be a good backup attacker. We see that Jesse's already got a B string in his hand. So I think Jesse is preparing for the worst here, saying, you know what, if you get the turn to Rare Candy Vika Volt and then. Uh, attack with Tapu Bulu GX. I'll at least be able to respond. And this Zygarde is cell connectoring for 70 damage. So the Bulu is taking quite a hit. Looks like Barlow has to Ultra Ball his entire hand down. He's only got one card left in hand. And that might just be a rare candy. He Ultra Balled away a Lele and an Aether Paradise. Uh, but no, it's not. So that is a Lele, sure enough. I was going to say Ultra Balling the Lele, unless that's a supporter. It feels kind of sketchy, but uh, I like this play from Barlow, just thinning his hand down as much as he can for a big Lily. Uh, very, very good to grab the Lily off the deck with a zero card hand. Sometimes you might want to go for Cynthia, if you're, but really you want to maximize the use of Lily when you can. not So grabbing Lily when you have zero cards in hand instead of Cynthia is pretty much always the correct play just to maximize that fill your hand to six effect, which is difficult to do sometimes at later stages of the game. So Barlow's gonna draw six cards and he's looking for rare candy Vika Bolt. If he doesn't have it, it's gonna be really tough, I'm sure. And it looks like he does not, he would have slammed those down as quickly as possible if he did. So it's looking like this is just going to be a horn attack from Bulu, which is really tough here. And I guess I kind of see the strategy of Bulu in this current format. If you use Aether Paradise, I guess you might have a decent Zapdos matchup, especially with Tapu Wilderness GX able to completely heal your Bulu. I guess I can see the rhetoric there. But otherwise, I think Barlow might just be playing this deck purely for the memes, which is uh, not always the healthiest reason to play a deck, but definitely a reason. Barlow just has to bench the third grub and still no Vika Volt in sight and will horn attack for 120 damage. Jesse Parker definitely sighing in relief that his Zygarde does not go down. Lives 
to attack another day. And Zygarde is going to be knocking out Barlow's Tapu Bulu GX. Natalie was saying that she thought that this matchup should just be atrocious, but it's looking like Jesse was correct here, saying that it's not that bad at all. Now that he's able to stabilize, he's going to use that Verdict GX on Zygarde for 150 damage, making his Zygarde invincible to the attacks of Pokemon GX this turn, which is all the attackers in a Bulu deck really really just intends to attack with GX Pokemon every turn. So Barlow will probably be without an attack this turn. Now, that is uh, that is being forced upon him by the Verdict GX, but I think that Barlow would have probably failed to launch an attack this turn, even without a Verdict GX. We do see a Lily in his hand, though, so he's just going to opt to Guzma this turn, search out a Grass, probably start to manually power up his Bulu just with one more energy attachment with this net ball here that we're seeing. And that is what we got going on. So Bulu is going to be able to horn attack for 30 damage into this baby Buzzwall, but that does not feel optimal from Barlow's side at all. Hugely compromising situation. And Jesse might get to take two more prizes against this Bulu deck with his single Zygarde GX. I mean, really, Jesse is kind of just waiting here for Andrew to take some prizes so that he can B-string, accelerate to this Buzzwall. But here, uh, he's got an Acrobike. He Acrobikes into Fighting and Judge. I think that Jesse may have to manually attach to and hard retreat this active buzzwall. That just might be the correct play. It feels rough for sure, but I think he does not want to miss a beat. We could actually see Jesse just soften up this active Bulu as well. That could be another valid strategy. Soften it up for the eventual Zygarde GX later. But since buzzwall is just a one energy attacker, it's not actually the end of the world if it does get uh, uh, if it does have to hard retreat. But it looks like Jesse's going to commit the Beast Energy to the Bench Buzzwall GX. So he's got other plans. He's got a very big hand, so plenty of cards to work with here. Looks like Jesse's going to Ultra Ball, and we'll have to see what he discards. He's going to Ultra Ball, discarding. Looks like he's eyeing up a Fighting Energy and another Baby Buzzwall. Hit the bin. And we'll see what he opts to get here. If he's got a Lele, he might go for a Guzma. But actually, he's eyeing up that Marshadow, so he is ready to let loose. And he grabs the Marshadow, and he's going to be limiting himself to some smaller, to a smaller hand size. But it actually looks like he's just going to Guzma let loose, and I, I like this play. I think Guzma followed by let loose. You know, you get to target something on your opponent's bench, and also draw some cards all in the same turn. Can be very powerful. So that Zygarde. It's going to be going in with Land's Wrath. Jesse is looking for a choice band in order to take this knockout on the Tapu Lele GX. Right now, he's dealing 150 damage, 130 with Land's Wrath, plus the 20 from the Diancie and the Princess Cheers ability sitting there on the bench. So he rips a choice pain here off four cards. He takes a huge knockout, goes down to two prizes, and I'm pretty sure that would just do Barlow in. But, ooh, we see it. Unreal. Jesse grips the choice ban off of that let loose, just what he needed to take a knockout with Landsrath, and he takes a commanding lead, going down to just two prizes. Well, Barlow has not been able to take a single prize with his Bulu deck so far. Just a huge commanding lead by Jesse now. And we'll see if Barlow is able to finally get a Vika Volt into play this turn. He's Cynthia's. I mean, really, all he needs is, a, I guess, a Choice Band or another Grass Energy in order to take a knockout on the Zygarde. The Zygarde has 200 hit points. So Bulu is not actually taking a knockout on the Zygarde quite yet. That Horn Attack will only do 60 to Zygarde's remaining 80 hit points. 
Carlo does need to draw something off the six cards, but surely one of these cards in his hand will get him the knockout. And sure enough, he's got it. He could just attach Choice Band to the active and Horn Attack. So you would think that Barlow does not even play Vikavolt with not a Vikavolt in sight. Now, Jesse does also have the Beast Ring, just totally insane. And Barlow is going to scoop it up because he's got the energy for game. And Jesse takes the win. An unlikely victor in the type matchup. I mean, Bulu. The grass type could not get there against the grass weak Zygarde GX. So Jesse Parker going to move on to 3-0 here at Full Grip Games with Zygarde. Hula, Mike. What is up? How is everybody Yo, doing? Heard your 3-0. 3-0. With my Picaram deck. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yo. How's it been performing for you so far? Good, good, good. It's really fun. I set up like turn one, one game. Dude. I set up turn two, the rest of the games. It was ridiculous. Yes. It's powerful. really fast, and I was like, "Why do you play random Rayquaza?" I'm like, "This last game, yeah, I used uh, Rayquaza to end the game. He didn't oh. know how I was going to beat him, so I had <laughs> I had three energies on my Pika, uh, Pikachu Zekrom, right? And comes into my turn, and I'm like, I got game. And he's like, what? So oh. I play the Thunder Mountain, yeah, right? Uh -huh. I attach an energy from my hand, yeah, then. I used the Rayquaza and an yep. energy switch, and I was like, good Got game. it. Good game. Busted. Good game. And you'd already used your Coco Prism Star. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. he's there for. It's like a it second was, Coco Prism Star. It was ridiculous because <laughs> I, I ended up taking the three prizes for the game because he had a Lycanroc. Yeah. And so I hit him for 200 for the Lycanroc, and then I knocked out his uh, uh, Rock Rough on the bench. That's insane. You like, just beat a, boom. a Lycanroc deck with a Lightning deck. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Apparently, you're going to be playing against Jesse Barker in the final round. Oh, gosh. On stream. He's playing nice. Zygarde. Nice. Ah, yeah. uh, and Yab. And Yab, I know him. Apparently, there's yeah. a, apparently, there's a Miltank Zapdos out there. Yes, I was just... Doing things. I'm like, wait, wait. Did you just... you? I think he is. He's Will is getting beat by it right now. Will has already lost to it. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's been in the chat. He's very salty. Oh, very salty. Yes, oh, gosh. Yes. So, oh. best of luck to you. For those of you guys who... May not know. Got your own channel, too. Ooh, yeah, you guys should check me out. I'm at Prof Mike. So twitch.tv forward slash Prof Mike. Twitch.tv slash Prof Mike. We'll drop that in here. Twitch.tv so slash Prof Mike. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, anybody watches Dariums already knows Mikey the Legend, <laughs> you know, from uh, Wacky Wednesday. Did you get the Wacky Wednesday video up? I did not. I, I I already it's, it's it's getting edited now. Might be wacky Thursday. It's gonna be wacky Thursday. It's super <laughs> wacky Wednesday. Super yeah. wacky Wednesday. Excellent stuff. So. Well, I'll let you go. Good luck All in right. your final round. Man. Thank you. Yeah. You guys take it easy. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Getting ready for round four here at the Full Group Games League Tournament. We've got Mike Collins on the left. That's right, Hulan Mike from Darium's fame. Also a world-renowned judge. He's judged at Worlds before. He's been uh, the head judge for the junior age division, I believe. So a world-renowned judge in Mike Collins. He also travels to many of the international championships every year to judge various age groups there. And Jesse Parker on the right. Jesse Parker has that uh, has that Zygarde list that we saw last round. And Mike is playing my Pikachu and Zekrom list. That's with the order pads. And it looks like Mikey does have an order pad in that opening hand, which may or may not get him the cards he needs in order to draw out of this opening hand. Fortunately for Mikey, he does also have a mulligan coming down. This is a very tough matchup for Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX, but both these players are 3-0, so they are competing for the top spot here at our Wednesday Night League Tournament. We have uh, about 18 players here tonight, so a full house, big, big turnout on a Wednesday night for our tournament. And I can't tell if this is a coin flip for Jesse here or, you know, what that is, but... Uh, Actually, it looks like he's just spinning the die, having some fun here. Definitely going to be an exciting match. Jesse definitely has the type advantage on paper, but we do know that Pikachu and Zekrom can be an aggressive deck that is capable of taking down even 
fighting type attacker. So we'll see which player is on the draw here and who's going to be going first. Uh, fortunately, Mikey was able to start Zapdos. So if Jesse is able to get a quick attack launched, he's going to have to hit into the fighting resistant Zapdos, which could could act as a perfect barrier here for Mikey as he sets up more powerful Pikachu and Zekrom GXs. Uh, all things considered though, this should be a tough matchup, but I wanted to show off this match on stream since this is just showcasing the strength of Zygarde GX in standard format. And I think that that is something exciting, a little bit of breath of fresh air in the standard format. We don't get to see different types of rogue decks do well all too often. The format has really narrowed itself down to a handful of competitive decks and it's nice to see something new. So even if that deck does have an extremely favorable matchup against uh, a meta mainstay, then that's okay. I wanna showcase that and showcase something new happening in standard in the form of Zygarde GX. So very cool here to have this deck on stream and I'm excited to see how it can perform against the proven Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. It'll be interesting to see who is going first. Oh, and it looks like Natalie is telling us that Brady won the Detective Pikachu tickets. We just gave those away here at Full Grip Games, so that's very exciting. And it looks like Mikey has a Zapdos and a Pikachu Zekrom. Jesse is going to be going first, so Mikey does have a chance to attack on turn one. We heard him back here during his interview saying that he was able to get a turn one full blitz during one of his games. The other games, he consistently got a turn two full blitz, and it looked like Mikey was just blown away by the pure power of the Pikachu and Zekrom deck. He was very impressed. Uh, Mikey doesn't get to play all the time since he is primarily a judge. He judges most times when he goes to tournaments. But, you know, a seasoned veteran himself, he is a world's competitor as well and qualified for the world championships back in the day. I'm not exactly sure what year Mikey did qualify, but he is a world's tier player uh, as well. And Jesse is going for his first world's invite this year. I actually played Jesse in the final round of the league challenge that I went to yesterday. And... I uh, was able to beat Jesse, but Jesse won the whole challenge. We were both 3-1, and Jesse ended up winning on opponent's opponent's resistance. So that was uh, that was pretty funny. But anyways, Jesse advanced to about 300 and maybe 20 points so far in uh, his route, or 420. I think he's at like 420 points en route to his world's invitation. I am at 399 championship points, so still out there hunting for some championship points. I've started going to locals finally and admitting that I am going to have to go to some locals if I want to get this world's invite this year. So Jesse Lilly's for a huge hand here turn one. He's got ultra ball. He's going to be able to maybe get a turn one let loose if that's what he wants. I know that that's a strategy that he aims to do in a lot of games is just power up the Zygarde, go for a turn one let loose and hope your opponent does not draw out of it. That is something we could see work here. I think that Zapdos is probably the best starter that Mikey could have hoped for in this matchup. Now, granted, the list only plays one copy of Zapdos, so unfortunately that means that Mikey is not going to be able to retreat into another Zapdos in order to launch an attack this next turn, but it at least is going to buy Mikey a couple of turns and that's all he really wants. He just needs a couple of turns to manually attach to his Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX and then hopefully launch a full blitz or a tag bolt in order to knock out the Zekrom GX. I think once Mikey is able to clear that first Zygarde GX it's going to get a little bit easier but maybe not because then we also know that Jesse does play Sledgehammer so it could get kind of complicated and Mikey could be in a situation where maybe it is not optimal to uh, to actually knock out the Zygarde. Maybe he wants to go for a uh, 
maybe he wants to go for a full blitz, not for knockout. And sure enough, Mikey draws into almost the exact same hand, which is kind of hilarious. He's got the Viridian Forest, and he's also got Order Pat. So he might decide to cycle an energy first, but he knows that this game is going to come down to this Order Pat. If he flips the heads, he's in there. And Tails, he's not. So that is the way of the Order Pad. He has got a really terrible looking hand here without a heads on that Order Pad. If he flips a heads on the Order Pad, he's off to the races. He can go get Ultra Ball, Ultra Ball for Lele, and get himself a Lily to Lily for seven cards or eight cards. Tails on that Order Pad feels really bad. It was going to come down to that flip, and without that being heads, Mikey just has to manually attach to his Pikachu and Zekrom GX and pass. That is a sad, sad day, unfortunately, for Pikaram. Now, Jesse has a Guzma in his hand. He's going to be able to Guzma up the Pikachu and Zekrom on Mikey's bench and potentially target it down for a big cell connector he's dealing a hundred damage with cell connector right now and that would just be absolutely devastating i know he's got an energy in his hand so he's going to be able to attach that to retreat the marsh shadow and get that cell connector going so that could be potentially devastating if mikey does not draw into anything this next turn it is gonna be just game over jesse really just uh you know putting the pedal to the metal here and just drawing super aggressively. We were hearing him talk about this deck. The deck plays Acrobike, Judge Whistle, and Marshadow. So just tons of options to draw through the deck. We see him just churning through his deck right here. Acrobike into Acrobike. He doesn't even care if he's discarding supporter cards in route to a gigantic turn two attack here. And he's sure enough discarded a bunch of fighting energy and gonna get that cell connector for 200 damage while Mikey is just sitting here trying to not lose. Does cell connector not do 200? I see 100 there. Yeah, Mikey, you weak to you weak to fighting, bro. That's 200 damage. That should be 200 on that you could choose that crop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go ahead and get that other yeah other hundred damage out there. Yeah, that's that's more like it. And we're going to need one more deck. Yep, 200. Yikes. So did Mikey draw anything? No, he did not. He's going to have to drag up something on... Uh, he's going to Brooklet Hill just look through the deck. I mean, that it's so sad using Brooklet Hill. And you know that you can't actually get any targets. But he's just going to look through the deck real quick. And then what's funny is we're going to get to see what his top deck would have been. It would have been Rayquaza, so not a good top deck. So... It's it's all good. He's just uh, he's just buying himself a little bit of time, getting to think about all the cards he wishes he could have drawn, and you know he's got a Guzma in his hand, so he's gonna have to Guzma up something on Jesse's side of the field and just hope to stick it. But the odds of being able to do that when really Jesse just has such a huge command over the cards in his deck and can just draw into them very easily, it's gonna be pretty tough. I think he's got to just bring up the Diancie, though, and hope that it sticks. This Pikachu and Zekrom list is not playing any heal cards either. That or he might just bring up the Marshadow and actually just take a knockout. It's also an idea. Uh, definitely really, really tough. And I think uh, at this point, Mikey does not have uh, any cards in his hand. So he kind of has to draw cards. So I agree with this route here. You have to knock out the marsh shadow to just take a prize and actually advance your board state towards winning he's got an energy switch off of the prizes so that is really tough looks like jesse just confidently is promoting that buzzle there just projecting that he's already got the guzma in hand to bring up the pikachu and zekrom tag team gx on mikey's bench and this is going to be absolutely devastating Targeting down that Pikachu Zekrom. So sad. Mikey's whole game decided by that one order pad. Flipping tails. Absolute devastation here. But that is the way of the order pad Pikaram list. It got him to 3 0. He got some very quick, uh, very quick Pikaroms in, uh, in his first few games. But then, you know what? The list uh, seems to have fizzled out here right when it became game time. It looks like Jesse might be eyeing up. 
a potential GX attack here. I think that's a fine play from Jesse. He's going to take three prizes and a lone Zapdos will have to get promoted, which could still damage the Pikachu and Zekrom tag team GX. However, it's just not really going to be doing anything substantial. And I think Mikey just top decked another Picarom. So he's just got a handful of golden Picaroms and absolutely nothing else. He's got an energy switch. He could Thunderous Assault for 10. I think it's just uh, at this point, ain't nothing else really going to help. I mean, he just kind of has to poke for 10. What's the point? It all feels so bad. I think you almost have to energy switch off, but I think keeping a card in hand is fair if he top decks a... Um, oh my gosh, Jesse just has the Guzma. He's going to go and Lele for Guzma, and then he's got an energy in hand to retreat with the DCE, and that's game. Jesse's going to take it. A swift execution of the Picarab deck. That is tough there, and Mikey unable to do much. Exactly what we expected, to be honest, but Zygarde really just showing how strong it can be when it hits the correct matchups. And we see Mike's prizes there. He prized his Tapu Koko Prism Star and his Thunder Mountain Prism Star. So there really wasn't going to be all that much that he was going to be able to do anyway. The Richard Dogma, thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it. Subs, let's all show the Richard Dogma some love here with some emotes. Let's give him the Misty Wow. Thank you so much for the sub. Hype. All right. Let's shower him with some Misty, some Misty Wow. Thank you guys so much. And uh, let's get Jesse Parker back here for an interview because uh, he just went 4-0 with Zygarde at our league tournament. So pretty busted and excited to see what he thinks of his Zygarde deck. Jesse Parker, 4-0 with right. Zygarde. How you doing, Ooh, Jesse? I'm doing, you know, it's great. You know, you just let loose and, and you win games, you know? That is Ooh. exactly what we saw there. You were telling us before your deck aims to just let loose and get a very quick Zygarde. It's exactly what you executed there. So. Yeah, it's kind of taking it's kind of taking full advantage of just, like, the problems with standard right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's 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 fine. I mean, uh, it, yeah, that's the strategy either way. It's like right. you just you let loose and you attach an energy and yeah, you just start swinging. So. Exactly, and that's exactly what we saw there. The Zygarde able to do huge numbers to Pikachu and Zekrom. Mikey flipped tails on his opening order pad. Really brutal yeah, there. Yeah, that was rough. I felt yeah. bad. Ah, yeah. uh, well, you know, uh, it's a greedy list. It, it kind of <laughs> is a little bit, but I just feel like that the tails are just so much You just much know more when it than flips heads. heads, it's going to pop Oh, off, yeah, though, it's, it's such know. a double-edged sword. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So, anyways, uh, yeah. you do what you can. I mean, let loose turn one. That's as strong as it gets in standard yeah. format right now. Let so. loose turn one, and then just uh, all those um, search cards, like uh, Judge Whistle and Acrobike to find the Guzmas. And then from there, all you really... Actually, I probably should have just left that Viridian in play, honestly. Uh, that game. Just found the yeah, because then I just keep finding energy attached to Marshadow and, um, you know, Guzma Retreat. Um, we saw you had Guzma three turns in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Like I said, the problems of standard format right now. Marshadow and Guzma spinning. Right. So, yeah, absolutely you know? insane, right? Uh, but yeah, it's just crazy. That's just that that's how the games with that deck go most of the time. That's how you win like the majority of your games with that deck is just you just yeah. So let loose turn one, target down threats. You have a one energy attacker with two hundred hit points who's oh, yeah. hitting the most popular decks in format for weakness. Oh yeah. Absolutely crazy. So great, powerhouse yeah. of a deck. Do you it think really that you could find yourself playing it? Um, any, at a cup. Any future tournaments? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, honestly, I don't know if I'm going to go to any more cups, but um, I, why, I would. Why is that, Jesse? Uh, right? Well, uh, you why, see, why I that, have Jesse? a couple finishes. Uh, uh, pretty good finishes, you know, first and second. Not bad. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, so I might try to go get that plus 10, but probably not, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't but, yeah, I you. would, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I would play it, but it's not. it's definitely not a safe play. Like, okay. you, you really do just lose to those Zapdos decks because, like, Cell Connector does nothing to Zapdos. It, it, with Diancia, it does 50 damage. You're not even two-shotting Zapdos. And then and then you attach, and then they get the attack off for 80 damage, and then you kill their one prizer, and then they Electro Power, Choice Band, kill your Zygarde, and then you're just in a really bad spot. So, like, 
It really does have a terrible matchup against Zapdos. And your but, GX uh, attack actually does nothing to it, Zapdos. No, it's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> like, literally, the GX move is just so they can't Coco GX you, which is actually right. relevant if you're ahead, because that's their only comeback mechanic in that matchup. But, uh, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if you if you really, th- if you think your region is, or your area is going to be, like, playing a lot of Zork and a lot of Picarom, it's actually a really good play. So, uh I'm probably gonna post the list on my Twitter later. So if plug it. What is it? Y'all, if y'all want to follow my Twitter, uh, J Parker TCG. I post all my lists on there. Uh, it's not really my list, but I'll share it. It's a uh, it's a list that did well in Japan recently. Uh, I got top four at a really large cup, like a hundred person cup, I think it was. So, wow. Yeah. It, uh, there was two Zygards that did well at that cup. So super uh, cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. So. I'll have to um, throw that on there. Well, definitely give Jesse a follow. He stay with the spice. Always looking up cool and interesting decks to play. He's got it all. So make sure to check out Jay Parker TCG on uh, Twitter. And while you're there, give me a follow too. At Enjoy Friend. E-N-J-O-I Friend. Thank you, Jesse. No problem. And solid performance, man. Thank uh, you. We're going to be right back, and then we're going to raid Riley. All right, and that is it. Jesse Parker taking it all, winning the Wednesday Night League Tournament with Zygarde GX. So very exciting finale there, able to take down Pikachu and Zekrom at the hand of Hulan Mike Collins. We're going to head on over and raid Riley. It's about raid Riley o'clock here at Tricky Gym. Apparently, Riley is streaming with Otto and is going to be doing his episode of Tag Team featuring Otto in preparation for the Denver Regional Championship. So make sure to give them all some love over at their channel. We're going to go ahead and raid Munner now. So take it easy. Thank you all so much to the mods. Thank you to everybody who donated bits tonight. Thank you to everybody who subbed to the channel as well. Appreciate the love and support. Thank you so much for the viewership and the follows. Appreciate it. You guys take it easy. Have a good one. And hopefully uh, I get to see many of you at the Denver Regional Championships. I'm also going to be streaming tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, as well as Friday morning, I think. I have to check and see what time my flight is, but I'm pretty sure streaming streaming Friday morning as well. So I'll be back-to-back streams there. And then, uh, like I said, Full Group Games is also going to be vending the Denver Regional Championships, so make sure to check them out. If you are at the Denver Regional Championships or FullGripGames.com, we've got Detective Pikachu pre-orders up now, singles, boxes, and coats. Make sure to check that out too. But I'm done. That's it. Y'all have a great day. I got to eat. I haven't eaten all day. Take it easy. Peace. Raid Riley. Go. Let's raid. Raid time. Please, everybody, let's go to Riley's stream. Have a good time. We've got 37, 36. Let's go. Boom.